no, 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 no. Oh no, the door is blocked by a broom. What shall I do? Oh no, this one too. Come on guys, if you didn't want me to go through these doors, couldn't you make it more convincing? See? Now that's better. No, not really, no. I'm alone in the dark. The remake for Alone in the Dark is a mixed bag, but at least it's here. It's finally here. After talking about all of the games in the franchise for the past four months, except this one, I was excited to see what this remake would bring to the table. Will it be good? Will it finally, finally, bring this franchise out of the dark, ironically, and into the light? Well, you've read the title of the video. Full disclosure, I haven't finished the whole game yet. Boo, you stink! But I had some thoughts about it and I wanted to share them. I feel like I have a good understanding of what to expect. This video is more of a general view of the game, rather than a full breakdown of everything that happens. I will eventually do my usual long form video about it, where I will probably ramble for way too long, but some people seem to enjoy it for some reason, so in the meantime I wanted to share my general opinions about it, and tell you why I think it's good, but also highlight some flaws, because the game isn't perfect. You must be kidding, aren't you? Here we are. I chose the hard difficulty, on medium it feels too easy. You can change this at any time during the game by the way. If you truly want to feel like you're in the 90s, then select the old school option. You will get no hints, and you will have to figure stuff out on your own. Though it's not really a problem, because the puzzles are pretty easy. Let's start here. The puzzles. They are a major part of old school survival horror games, like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Damn, I've been saying Resident Evil and Silent Hill so many times for the past few months. There are some memorable puzzles though, like the piano puzzle in Silent Hill 1, or the piano puzzle from Resident Evil 1, which wasn't exactly a puzzle, you either found a music sheet to learn the notes so you could play the piano, or you just let someone else do it, but only the women can do it. I guess this game tries to show us that men can't play the piano. Because they're busy punching boulders with their big muscles, yeah, so big. Uh, what was I talking about? If you want super challenging and fat provoking puzzles, you probably won't find them here. I mean, I'm glad that they aren't obscure and annoying like they were in the original, but I would have liked something a bit more challenging. There are no moments where you find an item and you have no idea what to do with it because you have no context, and only after an hour or two you finally understand what the hell you're supposed to do with it, which is something that happened a lot in classic survival horror games. Here, what you need will usually be nearby, or even in the same room, so it's pretty obvious what to do. I mean, if there's a locked door, and then you find an item that opens the door, and it's in the same room, well then it's pretty clear what you're supposed to do with that item. Oh shit, I'm sorry. However, you still need to pay attention. The puzzles might be easy for the most part, but they aren't brain dead. Some of them require some thinking. I got stuck sometimes because I missed some sort of hint. If it's not super obvious what you're supposed to do, usually there will be a note that you'll need to read in order to understand the solution. Why do people always leave notes in horror games, by the way? Do they have so much free time that they can just write all of this shit? Speaking of notes, like in the new Nightmare, which is the original remake of this game from 2001, the important parts are highlighted, so you don't have to read the entire thing. That's convenient. What's even more convenient is that like in the original, whenever you pick up notes, there's a narration accompanying it, so you don't even have to read at all. Who even knows how to read these days? Every night the dark man stands opaque at the threshold of my room. Counting the days until my spirit spills out of my tired shape. The voice acting is good, and it makes it more digestible. You can pass the note reading, but they will start from the beginning when you unpause. Pictures of dust covered landscapes without a drop of water. Every day. 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 Even your objectives have a narration. 
You keep all of your notes in your inventory. Hardcore players might be disappointed with the lack of inventory management. There's actually no inventory, really. This isn't like a limited space where you can only hold a certain amount of items. You can pick up anything you see, no problem. Of course there's a cap on how much you can pick up. If, for example, I have 5 health drinks, I can't pick up more than that. I need to use one of the drinks to pick up the next drink. By the way, you drink alcohol to restore health, and you can pick it up from trash cans. Now I'm no expert, but that's probably, probably not the best idea. But you know what? I haven't tried it. I haven't tried drinking from a trash can, so who knows? <laughs> Frank, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> That's my character! I'm the trash man! There's even a point in the story where you're offered a drink and your character chooses something cheap. You then get scolded for it. You know, just give me the cheap stuff. I'm not much of a connoisseur. Having low standards is not a virtue, detective. Let me see if I can broaden your perspective. Bitch, I drink from trash cans. What standards are you talking about? If we're talking about the characters, let's talk about the story a bit. Don't worry, no spoilers. The way that everyone behaves is like... It's like you're watching an episode of Twin Peaks. You know that weird surreal show from like 30 years ago? It's kind of like that. And little lambs eat fiery. I'm back! In the original, the mansion was empty and devoid of human life. Here it's the opposite. People are crawling all over the damn place. Everyone you speak to has this weird but calm way of talking to you. Even though things are clearly not normal around here, and the owner of this place just disappeared. Jeremy has gone missing. There's no need to worry, but it might be some time before he turns up. No need to worry. It's normal for people to just disappear. Happens all the time. Yep. Also, I like this version of Edward. He's polite, but he knows when to break the rules. He's a loose cannon, yo. Alright, in that case, we'll just wait in his room. You don't mind, do you? It's upstairs, right? Wait, you can't. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. He was hired by Emily to find the owner who disappeared. Emily is the other player character, by the way. She wants to know what happened to him, because that's her uncle. She also thinks he's insane. Like, truly insane. At the beginning of the game, you get to choose which character you want to play as. And that changes some things. It changes how the game will play out, but not entirely. The cutscenes will be different, and your interactions with characters and certain events will be different. I'm happy to see that they do interact with each other, and the game doesn't just forget about the other character that you didn't pick. It's like in RE2. That's great. As you progress, more and more weird shit will happen to you. You'll move from one location to another, seemingly at random, and you're like, Ooh, wow, how did I get here? Oh, oh, oh no, what's going on? Reality will start to shift around you, and it can happen at any place at any time. You'll even start questioning your own sanity, and eventually, you'll even fight some monsters. We finally got to the part you've all been waiting for. Yes, all three of you who stuck around up until now. The combat. I'll just sneak up behind him, and oh shit! I already lost half of my health. Okay, he probably won't come inside the house. Oh no! I wasted most of my bullets and half of my health just to kill one of them. Yeah, the combat can be intense, at least on hard. Or so I thought. On hard difficulty, enemies are deadly. This game isn't messing around. They hit hard and they're fast, going from a normal walking speed to suddenly lunging at you. Some can even spit acid shit at your face. It's tense. You have guns, which is pretty standard. You point at the bad thing and you shoot. Bang bang. But you also have melee weapons. You can find them in the environment, but they're like me when I cry at night. They don't have infinite durability, and they will break after a few hits. They're only enough to take down a single enemy, but at least they help you conserve a few bullets. I actually started running away from enemies. My survival horror instincts told me to conserve ammo, but that didn't always end well. You have to be strategic and think fast. Sometimes you need to run away. Sometimes you need to lure enemies away from each other and use the environment to escape. You can throw random objects at the monsters that you find scattered around. There's also a dodge button that you can abuse 
Having said all of that, it can be a bit easy if you know what you're doing, but you can still die really fast if you're not careful. I don't know how I feel about their design, their overall look. I guess it's fine. I guess the developers didn't want to make them zombies, like in the original, because it would be too generic, which is true. Still, I think they look fine. They serve their purpose. Your health is displayed at the bottom, but you can also see how much your character is damaged by looking at the amount of ketchup on your suit. I like that. Though, I don't know how I feel about the fact that enemy spawns are restarted when you reload your save. Lastly, we have to talk about... The Jank. You've probably seen people complaining about the game's performance. From what I've seen, they're mostly exaggerating. But... There are some problems. It's mostly the stuttering. Even though my PC far exceeds the necessary requirements for this game, it still happens. It's not a deal breaker, it's not very common, at least not for me, but it does happen. The game likes to stutter. It mostly happens when I go into new areas, especially when I'm opening doors. It's quite annoying, but again, not too bad, and it doesn't happen often. Huh. There are a few other minor problems. While characters are speaking, their sentences can be cut off sometimes in the middle of their sentence. I recognize this place. It's a mystery. Make sure the subtitles are turned on. Also, the faces can look weird sometimes. At least it's entertaining. Other than that, the game ran fine, with all settings maxed out. I hope the developers will address these issues, but either way, don't worry about it too much. And if you care about graphics, then yeah, it doesn't look super ultra AAA, next gen, oh my god. It's fine. It's alright. It's... It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I think that whether you will like the game or not entirely depends on what you expected from it. If you wanted something super hardcore with difficult puzzles and intense resource management, then you might be disappointed. If, for some insane reason, you wanted this to be a truly faithful adaptation of the original with the exact same story and style of gameplay, then again, you'll be disappointed, you insane person, you mad man or mad woman. But if you wanted an action horror game that is occasionally challenging and spooky, with some pretty easy but still entertaining puzzles that do make you think sometimes, a game that is loosely based on the original but adds and expands the plot in quite interesting ways, then I think you'll like this one. That's pretty much what I expected. And that's pretty much what I got, so I'm happy. At least for now. I still need to finish the whole game first, but what I'm mostly happy about is that, finally, there's a proper entry in the series. If you've been watching my latest videos, or you've just been curious about this franchise, or you actually love this franchise, you might want to try it out. Obviously, don't just take my word for it, watch some other videos and make up your own mind, and then buy the game, because I told you so. No, I'm kidding. Make up your own opinion. For the longest time, it seemed like this franchise was cursed. Cursed to fail. Especially after this. I don't have your stone! And fuck you anyway! And that other one we don't talk about. It's still kind of cursed. But at least, it's finally here. It exists. I'll be back with a full video in... I don't know how long. Probably after all of the big YouTubers will post their own handsome videos about it. It's okay, it's fine. I'm not upset about that. I'm not crying, you're crying. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in about three weeks. What the fuck?